Good morning. Good morning. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And are we not so thankful for this beautiful fall morning? Yeah. Whew, thank you. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> I'm Pastor Nanette Christofferson, and along with Pastor Steve Talmadge, we welcome you to this 1030 in-person and online traditional worship service. Just a few announcements before we get started today. Our pastoral intern, Kevin Anderson, is taking a previously planned vacation, so he will return on Wednesday. Dick Beckman has also been on vacation and will be returning next Sunday. For the Lord's Prayer in this service, we are using a more contemporary version, and uh, it's included in your pamphlet that you have. Uh, you're also invited to pray the prayer, or the Lord's Prayer version that is most comfortable for you. There's fourth through sixth grade gathering today, and they are invited to come to the Center of Compassion at 3.30 for games, root beer floats, and a time of learning about the Bible as well. So if you know anybody who has a fourth through sixth grader, we'd love to have them. Bring them on by at 3.30. Just a few things. I have several announcements that are all in a row, but if you want more information, more information is on our app, it's in our e-news, and it's also on our website. Please note that the Fall Festival is this Friday from 5 to 7 p.m. Next Saturday, we have a Sleep in Heavenly Peace bed build. We also, next Sunday, have a blood drive as well. And on the 31st of October is our first session of Growing Through Grief. All of this has a lot more information on the website, on our app, and in our e-news. So please feel free to look those up. Next Sunday is Reformation Sunday, so wear red, um, as that's the color and symbol of the Reformation, and at 9 o'clock, we will be confirming four confirmands. Hospitality was offered earlier, and just for those of you that are new, please come around 10.15 or 10.10, and hospitality is offered out on the patio, and there's lots of delicious goodies and treats, and so feel free to come early as you get to know some 9 o'clock people and also 10.30 people as well. Please take the time to greet others around you as you're leaving today, and uh, be sure to welcome someone whom you do not know. We're so thankful and, and so glad that you are joining us today. Let us now prepare our hearts and minds as we get ready to enter into worship. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Let us confess our sin to God who is faithful and just and who has promised to forgive our sin and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, have mercy on us. We confess to you that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not trusted you with our whole heart. We have not loved one another in deed and in truth. In your compassion, forgive our sin, and so uphold us by your spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our light and our truth. Amen. With joy, I proclaim to you that Almighty God, rich in mercy, abundant in love, forgives you all your sin, and grants you newness of life through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Be to God.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Sovereign God, you turn your greatness into goodness for all the peoples of the earth. Shape us into willing servants of your kingdom and make us desire always and only your will through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We listen to the word of God. Hello. Our first reading is from Isaiah. Surely he has borne out our infirmities and carried out our diseases. Yet we accounted him stricken, struck down by God, and afflicted. But he was wounded for our transgressions, crushed for our inequities. Upon him was the punishment that made us whole, and by his bruises we are healed. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have all turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid on him the inequity of us all. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep before its shears is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By a perversion of justice, he was taken away. Who could have imagined his future? For he was cut off from the land of the living stricken for the transgression of the people. They made his grave with the wicked and his tomb with the rich. Although he had done no violence and there was no deceit in his mouth, yet he was the will of the Lord to crush him with pain. 
When you make his life an offering for sin, he shall see his offspring and shall prolong his days. Through him the will of the Lord shall prosper. Out of his anguish he shall see light. He shall find satisfaction through his knowledge. The righteous one, my servant, shall make many righteous, and he shall bear their inequities. Therefore, I will allot him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out himself to death and was numbered with the transgressors, yet he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors. This is the word of the Lord. Next reading is from Hebrews. Every high priest chosen from among mortals is put in charge of things pertaining to God on their behalf to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal gently with the ignorant and wayward since he himself is subject to weakness. And because of this, he must offer sacrifice for his own sins as well as those of the people. And one does not presume to take this honor but takes it only when called by God just as Aaron was. So also Christ did not glorify himself in becoming a high priest, but was appointed by the one who raised, who said to him, you are my son, today I have begotten you. As he also says in another place, you are priests forever, according to the order of the Mesogec. In the days of his flesh, Jesus offered up prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears. To the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverent submission. Although he was a son, he learned obedience through what he suffered. And having been made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him. Having been de designated by God a high priest according to the order of the Mesogec. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. James and John, the sons of Zebedee, came forward to Jesus and said to him, Teacher, we want you to do for us whatever we ask of you. And Jesus said to them, What is it you want me to do for you? And they said to him, Grant us to sit, one at your right hand and one at your left, in your glory. But Jesus said to them, You do not know what you are asking. Are you able to drink the cup that I drink or be baptized with the baptism that I am baptized with? They replied, we are able. Then Jesus said to them, the cup that I drink you will drink, and with the baptism with which I am baptized you will be baptized. But to sit at my right hand or at my left is not mine to grant, but it is for those for whom it has been prepared. When the ten heard this, they began to be angry with James and John. So Jesus called them and said to them, You know that among the Gentiles, those whom they recognize as their rulers lord it over them, and their great ones are tyrants over them. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be slave of all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve, and to give his life a ransom for many. The Gospel of our Lord. Grace and peace to you from Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen. During this long season of Pentecost, it covers half of a year, and we're getting very close, only a few more weeks to go. The focus of our gospel readings are on who is Jesus and what does it mean to follow him. This season is all about discipleship, and disciples are students who have voluntarily, voluntarily accepted the invitation to learn from a skilled teacher or rabbi. 
they have responded to a desire to yoke themselves to this one of wisdom and insight so they too might emulate the way, the truth, and the life of the one they are following. It involves trust. It involves commitment. The journey to growth and learning is never presented as something that will not entail a breaking down of preconceived ideas and notions or understandings, and it will not be without some sort of loss or sacrifice. Many of us gathered here today know all about this. We know that as we've lived our life and been able to grow and develop the skills and abilities that God has given us, it would not be without the gift of wise teachers, personal sacrifice, and a willingness a willingness to be open to see, hear, and do things in new ways. One of the challenges in the church today and my long experience in the Lutheran church is the practice assumption or simple resignation to being a student of Jesus ends when we affirm the faith of our baptism through the rite of confirmation. As we approach Reformation Sunday next week, one of the most influential things Martin Luther did was to write the small catechism. Not as future punishment for confirmation students to have to know and memorize, but he observed the utter abuse, the utter abuse and ignorance of the people in the pews who are being manipulated out of fear and misplaced trust in the institutional church. Rather than trust in God's unconditional love for them in and through the death and resurrection of Jesus, Luther was a strong proponent for ending illiteracy and putting into the hands of the people the Bible. He translates the Bible into the vernacular of Germany and the basic tenets of what it means to say, I believe, I believe, and I'm a follower of Jesus. Because Luther wasn't looking for members of a church. He was seeking to raise up followers of Jesus. But in my experience, many in congregations today still talk more about being a member of a church rather than about being a disciple or follower of Jesus. For many in the church, outside of the brief minutes of listening to a Sunday Bible reading or a sermon, intentional faith formation is lacking. Rather than be a resource and value-shaping force for living our lives through the tsunami of challenges and changes we have faced, we rely on a variety of other experts or people or props to sustain us and influence, influence us rather than our teacher and Lord, Jesus. As Lutherans, we are blessed and burdened by the gift of God's amazing grace. This unconditional love extended through the gift of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ is freely given to all of us, assuring us it is not our practice of spiritual disciplines which put us right and acceptable to God. We affirm it is God's love, period which declares you and me a daughter or son of God. The dilemma arises with the question of what does it mean to be a follower of Jesus? When Jesus has already taken care of our yearning for God's forgiveness, our yearning for God's acceptance of us, and provided us with e-tickets, e-tickets to eternity with God, why bother with any investment in lifelong learning when it comes to being a follower of Jesus? Why take time away from other valued things in our lives when my eternal destiny is not riding on it? Because of the pace at which life comes at us, it is often not until we find ourselves in our later years that we pause to reflect we may find we have a little more time for soulful reflection on the priorities we chose, 
the investments which we made with our life, which we did not earn but were blessed to be given. Many in this congregation who are engaging in intentional faith formation are over 70 years old, providing a great example that none of us is too old to learn from Jesus. And one of the great lessons those in our upper years have discovered is the importance of what Jesus has been trying to teach about who is first in the realm of God, who is greatest in the commonwealth of God, and the true privilege of being one who gives and serves rather than chase accolades, accumulates, and waits to be served. In the season of awarding Nobel Prizes, the late great humanitarian and Nobel Prize winner Albert Schweitzer said, I don't know what your destiny will be, but one thing I do know, the only ones among you who will really be happy are those who have sought and found how to serve. We continue today with Jesus on another road trip, the final road trip, with his students of three years. His followers and disciples have gotten the best practices for mission and ministry. They've had intimate conversation and experiences many would only wish to have with Jesus. They have heard stories about what life with God at the center is like with characters and scenes out of everyday life. They've had VIP access to one of the most popular celebrities of their day, seeing firsthand Jesus' healing transforming and changing people of all ages, backgrounds, class, and gender. They've been overwhelmed and stood in awe when the forces of nature respond to Jesus' word. And powerful people are humbled when their attempts to test or trap him in their schemes fail. You would think, after three years of graduate study, internship, and ready access to their teacher, the disciples would understand who he is, why he came into their lives and invited them to follow him, and for what purpose. But just like the lessons from Mark's gospel in our past weeks, they don't fully understand. Because Jesus chose human beings. Jesus chose people like you and me who are slow to listen and comprehend by having great, great potential for doing amazing things or sadly horrible things to ourselves and each other. Jesus chose ordinary people to be entrusted with the wisdom and to show them the power of God's presence at work in the world to draw others into a living and loving relationship with our Creator. But as we listen today, self-interest, and always being concerned about what's in it for me, miss the ultimate lesson where abundant God-centered life and real greatness are to be found. James and John, fishermen, Zebedee's boys, are possibly thinking and believing when Jesus finally gets to Jerusalem, the kingdom Jesus has been talking about for three years will become a present reality. Jesus will conquer all the opposing forces, human, demonic, and other. So like kingdoms in the past, Jesus can then rule with his associates, advisors, and supporters, sharing in some of that power and glory. Just before the reading we just had, for a third time, a third time, Jesus has explained even in more detail, been fully transparent, has not hidden anything in fine print what lies ahead in Jerusalem for him. He is going to be handed over, arrested, beaten, crucified by the authorities, and then on the third day rise from the dead. Imagine the face of Jesus when James and John rush up alongside him, leaving the other disciples behind. And coming with a question that they desperately want him to answer. 
Imagine Jesus with eyes that communicate he is focused and he is ready and willing to hear what they have to say. Picture a smile as he's always eager, always eager to help his disciples, his students grow and develop. What do you see on his face right after they ask their all-important question about who gets the most influential seats next to him when he comes into his kingdom? Jesus knows this is the team that he has selected through whom God will do God's important work after he dies and rises. This is a critical moment. His destiny in Jerusalem is only inches away. Though James and John obviously do not understand Jesus' answer about the cup or baptism, a bigger problem has erupted as the morale in the group begins to disintegrate. And petty issues and claims about who is more important and who matters most to Jesus begin to unravel this band of 12. Just like it unraveled the 12 tribes of their ancestors, whom God had called to be a blessing to the whole world. So Jesus offers a critical nugget a nugget of wisdom which will transcend time and place. But it is not so among you. But whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. And whoever wishes to be first among you must be a slave to all. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. Discipling congregations are constantly investing, inviting, and equipping more servant leaders, compassionately conscious leaders who have no problem serving the least, the last, the lost, and the little Discipling congregations are tuned in to who is being neglected, pushed to the margins, or being mocked and denigrated. Discipling congregations multiply servant leaders from those being served to advocating on behalf of and for the benefit of the least privileged in our society. Why? Because discipling congregations are following the ultimate servant leader who took that road trip to Jerusalem for you, for me, for all humanity to show us what real greatness is while setting us free, free to live the abundant and God-centered lives Each of us was created to live. Amen.
we join in the confession of the faith of the church. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. With the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, those in need, and all of God's creation. Lord, in your mercy. Holy One, you dominate and demonstrate for us what it means to be a servant leader. We pray for all servant leaders of the church, bless bishops, pastors, deacons, and the leaders of our congregation with humble wisdom and ground them in your love. Lord, in your mercy. Creative Lord, we pray. Kindle in us a spirit of caring strength in the preservation of habitats, food availability, and centers of refuge that all wildlife may thrive in your creation. Lord, in your mercy. Yes. Empowering Lord, we pray. Bring to the leaders of governments a spirit of humility and service that prioritizes those on the margins due to job loss, underemployment, and unsafe working conditions. Bring to our leaders a heart of service. Lord, in your mercy. God of restoration and healing, we pray for continued relief, recovery, and rebuilding efforts following Hurricanes Helene and Milton. Watch over, rescue, and protect those who are injured or ill. Nurse those who suffer hardship, disease, injury, or difficulty. Bring to them your comfort and your peace. And we lift up today those who are on our prayer list, Ollie, Sherry, Deb. Lois, Mike, Kirk. We lift up those who weren't listed but are on our hearts. Surround all, Lord, whom we have listed and, and set on our hearts in your comfort and in your presence of healing. Lord, in your mercy. Abiding one, we pray, for safe and easy access to early voting and for safety for all election workers. Lord, in your mercy, yes. saving one, we pray and give thanks for the disciples, James and John, and all saints who have faithfully served you. We rejoice in a promised place at the Feast of Victory that we receive by your grace alone. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O God, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen.
It is our duty and delight that we should everywhere and always offer thanks and praise to you, O God, through Jesus Christ, who calls us to follow his way of humble service and love. And so, with the church on earth, all creation, and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, and he gave thanks, and he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat, this is my body given for you, do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, and he gave thanks, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, this cup is the new covenant of my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Make us bold, O merciful God, to address you as our Abba as we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Come to the banquet, for all is now ready. on the body of Christ given to you.
O oh God, we give you thanks that you have set before us this feast of the body and blood of your Son. By your Spirit, strengthen us to serve all in need and to give ourselves away as bread for the hungry. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord.